morning, I'm Martin Cousins and... I'm Mike Morrison. So, day two of the CIPD L&D Show 2016. We're back on the beanbag and we've just had Itiel Draw, a cognitive neuroscientist, give us, I thought, an outstanding hour of his time, giving us um, some insights into basically what, how people can remember the stuff that we give them. Or not, as the case may be. Yeah. So what do you think, Mike? I thought it was really interesting. I think there's a few highlights for me. You know, the, stating the obvious sometimes, like you know, the mind is not a camera, the brain is not a camera. We don't see everything that's in front of us. We can give people a list of instructions, and yes, it's there. Yes, it's logical, but does the brain actually see it? No, and yet we expect them to. So I think that is a useful reminder. Mm. I think that it's pointless giving people a checklist or uh, a list of instructions if we don't help them understand what that means to them in their context. Uh, absolutely. I, I thought he had some really interesting thoughts on e-learning. <laughs> I think the, interesting is probably an understatement there, Well, Martin. yeah, but <laughs> this idea of, cog you know, our brain has only so much processing power yeah. available at any one time. So what do we do? I think, I think traditionally in L&D, and we still do it now, um, we kind of load it up with too much information yeah. and actually too much to do to get to the information that's really relevant. Yeah. So for e-learning, for example, someone gave a good example, you hear stuff, you see stuff, it can be hard to log into it, you have to click next in different places. All of this stuff affects our processing power. So the bit you actually need someone to pick up on is potentially completely lost because you, you know, you're, you're too busy faffing around giving too much information in too many ways. But I think worse than that, because one of the instances he gave was where people pay for animations of things to make things look interesting, but it doesn't actually add to the real learning content. It's there almost for entertainment purposes. And what that does as a byproduct is reduce the learning capability. Yeah. I thought that was quite fascinating insight. I think also the, the idea that, you know, learning and development's role is to lift the cognitive load yeah. for people. And that means really helping people get to the bit they need to get to yeah. and I think that's a really important lesson to really look at all learning you know initiatives content design through that frame of what actually does someone need to get out of this thing and how easy is it for them to get that um, you know so I think that's something that everyone should really be thinking about something that you just said that actually which I'd missed in the session is really interesting if a learning and development's job is to reduce the cognitive load, that actually flies in the face of what we do with coaching. With coaching, what we do is we make it hard for people to get the learning because we dance around it. We don't actually direct them at something. Mm. So I, that's actually got me thinking, and maybe not the time for a quick short video here, but is actually coaching anti-brain friendly? Who knows? I do not, <laughs> I'm, no, I'm no cognitive scientist, but what I would say is definitely look up Itiel Draw and his yeah. work. He cautioned against some of the suppliers in the market now that claim they're brain friendly but actually don't really know anything about cognitive science at all. So I think that's a good point. So He gave a really good example, didn't he, though, of going around and asking people, and after, think about the five whys yesterday, mm. asking two or three whys, and they just literally turned around to me and said, well, it's just good marketing. So even the suppliers know this, so buyer beware. Yeah, great. Thanks, Mike. Great, great session. Thanks, folks. See you later. See you soon.